Good morning, good morning. morning. Since it's all icky and gray outside and rainy, let's brighten this place up with the shine of our teeth. So find at least three people to smile at. Go. George. everyone open up your bulletins look on with me if you're visiting this morning if you would look at the end of your pew and there's a little sheet of paper we would love for you to fill it out so we could have a record of your visit and get to know you better with the questions that you answer um all right if you have your bulletins open you can see that we have evening worship tonight it's going to be in here in our sanctuary starting at six o'clock and we're going to hear from holly smith she had a really cool summer working uh as a passport intern so she's got some pictures i hope and she's going to tell us all about it so that starts at six come back tonight and also make sure that you come back this wednesday we will have supper at 5 30 and the menu is on the back of the bulletin and um, youth will be going to the nursing home at 6 o'clock. And then at 6.30, we will have our Bible study and um, kids' activities. Um, don't forget, Deacon nominations, last day to get this turned in. Hopefully you have one in your bulletin. Um, and this Wednesday also there will be a meeting at 5 o'clock, worship committee meeting. And we will be meeting in the senior adult room, 5 o'clock. All right, there are some announcements that aren't in your bulletin, so listen up. Um, yesterday was a yard sale the daycare had uh, at our, in our CMC, our gym area, as a fundraiser. Now, there are some items left over. So if you're interested, go visit right after the service this morning. Not right now, just wait. Um, it's still set up. You just see Miss Marilyn afterwards. Um, this Saturday was a planned a brotherhood but with it being a holiday weekend, they're going to switch it to Saturdays from now on the uh, 12th of September. So just know, brothers, that's when Brotherhood will be. And last one I need to announce that um, the Spirit on Mountain Street that went on this past weekend, and they made a total of $9,050 for the JCOC. So awesome. <laughs> awesome job. All right. I've done enough yapping, now it's your turn to yap. Find someone to say good morning to, or just be really quiet and give them a big old hug. Okay, go. Good morning again, everyone. I'd like, uh, like to welcome you again for, and thank you, I guess, too, for getting out on this gray morning and, uh, and coming here to worship with us. I want to give our thanks this morning to Mr. Mark Gray and his wife for, for being here with us today and to lead and share in worship with us. I had met him before, but I, I can remember faces, these are names. I told him a while ago I had his name messed up. I thought it was Mark, but it's been a few years ago. I don't really know much about Mark, but uh, I do have the pleasure of knowing someone who does, Jim Justice. <laughs> Give a better introduction than I. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. I know you also. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know Mark Gray and his wife, Mary. And I met Mark back a few years back uh, in a little project we've all heard about. Sowing seeds of hope, and that was a good crop. It hadn't been harvested all yet, but then that's been a good crop. And we thank you for that, Mark and uh, Barry, y'all's participation in that, and what did we have to do with it? We are thankful for that. But
But I did get acquainted with Mark back a few years ago and uh, done several projects along with him. And then, of course, by you the bachelor, a little windstorm called Katrina come along. Uh, got a little bit more acquainted with Mark there and that and some other folks. But Mark, it's good to have you with us this morning. And Mary, it's, it's good to have y'all with you with us also. And we're just looking forward to what you have to say. This morning's scripture call to worship comes from Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no, do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes are the, the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by the oath even to the hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. We are going to start our worship service with a time of prayer, and we're going to do a time of silent prayer. So you may pray whatever prayer you would like to, pray, to prepare yourself for the worship. So let's pray. Precious Lord, may you remove all of our worries, our fears, anxiety that we may have with us. Let us hear you, see you, feel you, know that you are here among us. May we give our all as we worship you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. I invite you to take a hymn this morning and turn to hymn number one. We ought to be able to find that one. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth. First, second, and fourth. Please stand.
Hymn this morning is Hymn 66, To God Be the Glory. We sing all three stanzas. if that's what we need to do since we were going to talk since mr uh, gray was going reverend gray was going to talk about uh words matter this morning that's what we we're going to talk about was where we find words and how we use words but i don't want to steal his thunder <laughs> so um we will just let you guys go on to to do you want to go to children's church maybe do you want to go with levi to children's church you want to, go? You want to try it you want to go i want what you want with me you want to go? all right we'll go later <laughs> we usually get a little longer break to breathe. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to for a second. Uh, okay, our, our offertory hymn this morning is hymn uh, 191. There's power in the blood. We'll just sing the first and fourth stanzas. First and fourth stanzas. Please stand as we sing.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the, uh, just the privilege and the honor to come worship here and, and spend time in awe of your glory, Father, and the and reminder of the many blessings you continue to bestow upon us as your people. Help us to be cheerful as we turn just a small portion of that to you and the work being done for your kingdom here on earth. Uh, we just pray that you'd be with us through the rest of this service in this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Mary and I are glad to be with you today. Uh, this feels like coming home to me, though I know many of you say, well, we don't really know you that well. But I had several interactions with your congregation and people in it through the years when I was with Alabama CBF and we were doing Sowing Seeds of Hope together. I, I saw Michael Duncan back here, Mike Duncan back here in the hallway, and I've met so many people. One of the great blessings of my life is those that I met through my work with CBF, but, but my brain synapses don't always fire like they should. And, and I saw Mike in the back, and he said, I'm Michael Duncan Sr., and it was like, bam, little flash, because Mike Oliver introduced me to Michael Duncan Jr., and uh, I have been an ardent admirer and follower of his throughout his ministry. Uh, I remember Peggy Hamby well. I, oh, I figured out early on, Peggy, that you got to know the church secretary because the pastor would promise you all sorts of stuff, but if the secretary didn't make it happen, it didn't count for a lot. It was fun to have supper with Jim and Shirley last night. I, Jim, I don't know whether I've ever told you, one of my scariest moments was with you and sowing seeds of hope. We were, have, we were doing some work down in Uniontown. Uh, actually, a gym and a crew from this church were doing some work putting a, a roof on a hot tin house, and it was hotter than it was hot. <laughs> and I got down there, and they were not only taking a break, but they were all sprawled out on the ground. I mean, it looked like we were going to have to call 911. And, and they were trying to hydrate and get back on the roof and finish the work. And, and there are still pictures that circulate in CBF life of of that little house in Uniontown uh, and uh, the ministry that was done by your congregation and others. And although I didn't make it to Williams in 2011, we did some work in McDonald Chapel. I followed very carefully that the heroic work that your church did in this community to minister to your families and others that were affected by that storm. So I'm glad to be with you today. Today I want to talk briefly from the book of James. James is considered the book of ethics in the New Testament. Short book, about four or five pages, depending on the print in your Bible. It's very much to the New Testament what Proverbs is to the Old Testament. Now, the language is not quite as flowery as some of the Proverbs language, but the, the idea is the same. There's not a lot of, to debate about the book of James because it's very simple and plain spoken. Now, that's not to say it's easy. But, but it's simple, and it's basic, and it's stuff that we read and think, yeah, I ought to know that. I ought to do that. But we're going to read a few verses from the first chapter today and then talk some together about this whole idea of words. I really hated Rhonda didn't do the children's sermon. Rhonda, I found that people take their best one-liners home out of the children's sermon, and I fear they'll go home without one today because you didn't speak, so we'll do our best. I'm going to begin in verse 17 and read through 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Now, that's another thing about James. It, statements come out that seem simple, but they're really profound. That's a statement right there. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. That's easy assent to assent to here. It's harder to move here. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because our anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Those who listen to the word but do not do what it says are like people who look at their faces in a mirror and after looking at themselves go away and immediately forget what they look like. 
But those who look intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves righteousness and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Words matter. That's not a profound theological statement. It's a kind of a saying, the obvious. Words matter. But how much do we really consider how much words matter? Think through Scripture. We're told in the book of Genesis this, in the beginning God created the heavens in the earth. And we don't get a picture of a God who is industriously building and moving and shifting stuff around. What does the scripture say? And God said, let there be light. And God said, let the day de be divided from the night. And God said, and God said, words spoke the world into existence. John picked up on that thing and I want that theme and I want to remind you of how that unique gospel begins. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was God, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This week has been a week for anniversaries. Jim talked about the work in Bayou La Battery after Hurricane Katrina ten years ago this week. You learn a lot of stuff on Facebook. It would have probably passed my notice, but I... I noticed that it was the 95th anniversary of the right of women to vote in this country this week. But there was another anniversary this week, not as prominent for others as for me. My maternal grandmother, mom we called her, would have been 112 years old. That makes me feel old. My grandmother was an interesting person. She was an English teacher for over 40 years. She was a woman for whom words mattered. But really, to me, she wasn't an English teacher. By the time I came along, she had retired, and except for coming and substituting in our class from time to time, which was not always a pleasant experience for Mark Gray. But that's another story. But she, words mattered to Mom. She was 4 foot 11. And she was old school before there was old school. I've heard football players talk about her grabbing them by their ears and dragging them to the office to Mr. Critzberg. Well, she held her grandchildren up to the same high standard and, and wanted us to work for everything that we got. And when I'd be reading and she wanted us to read and always stuck a book in our hands, I came along across a word I don't, didn't know. I'd say, Mom, what does such and such mean? Now, she could have flipped that off in 10 seconds. Well, Mark, that means so. You know what she always said? Look it up. Go get the dictionary. Look it up. Because she knew that I'd remember more if I found the word and got in the practice of looking it up. You couldn't Google it on a cell phone back then. Then if she just said, well, this is what the word means. Her words meant something. I was telling somebody this week, you know, for an English teacher who was filled with probably plenty of poetic lines, the one phrase I remember her using with me the most was when there was a hard task at hand, she didn't offer some wise word from Shakespeare or even some Mark Twain wise remark. She'd always look at me in her four foot eleven statue and say, grab it and growl, boy, grab it and growl. 
And to this day, though she's been dead for 30 years, I remember those words when life is tough. Grab it and growl, boy. Grab it and growl. Words do matter. I suspect if you took some time this morning and thought to yourself about words in your own life, good and bad, you remember certain words. You remember things your parents said or your children said, or you remember things from national news or other things that made the headlines. Words communicate. In the psalm that was read earlier, the psalmist writes that our participating in the kingdom of God, coming as it were to God's mountain, depends on two things at least. Doing the righteous thing and having good words. Good words matter in a number of different ways. They matter when we hear them, whether or not we choose to abide by them, and they matter how we use them. And I often think about our study of Scripture, and, and the truth is sometimes I wonder if we, if we didn't concentrate more on doing what we already know, the words we already know and don't do or don't do very well, instead of spending so much time on learning new words. Now, new words are important, don't get me wrong. But there's so much stuff we know we ought to do, and yeah, I know, but gosh, it's hard. Good words. Good words. Later in the book of James, James will talk about using words badly. He speaks of it a little bit in this passage, but later he talks about taming the tongue, and the psalm speaks of that as well. And often when we talk about the tongue, we really do talk in the negative. It's, it's, the, it's the don't gossip, don't say bad things, and all of that's important. But, but the, the, the way it's used in this passage, James is talking about the power of the word. The power of the word. God's Word, and the power of words. Storytelling. We love stories, not just because they entertain us, but because they inspire us. Sometimes we love them because they're cathartic. They help us get it out. Sometimes if we've been through a bad experience, just being able to say to somebody else, here's what happened. I don't need you to fix it. I know you can't, but I just need to talk about it. Those words matter. And then the words that we say to others, those words of encouragement, they don't have to be profound. They may be as basic as grab it and growl. But those words communicate. They inspire. They motivate. Go back and go through the life of Jesus. Jesus lived his life in such a way that, yes, his actions, and that really is what the book of James is about. James says, you can have all the right doctrine in the world. You can have the right beliefs, etc., etc., but that doesn't do you any good if it doesn't translate to action. And that's what the life of Jesus taught us. you got to do good. But Jesus, beyond doing good, used what to communicate? Stories, parables, words. In Matthew's Gospel, the Pharisee, the lawyer they call him, comes to Jesus and says, If you know so much, which is all of the greatest of the commandments? Of all the commandments, which is the greatest? And what did Jesus say? Often Jesus, when God, he got asked questions, he would turn it and ask another question. He would kind of raise the conversation. But he didn't this time. The lawyer says to him, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus didn't quibble. He didn't say, well, they're all important. Let me think about it. He comes right out with it. He says to him, you know the words. They're from the Hebrew Bible. The greatest commandment is what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. 
There are all kinds of ways of reducing the gospel message to different little mottos or, or things that we can hold on to. But Jesus said, Jesus said, loving God and loving neighbor is not one way to look at it. He didn't say all the others don't matter. What he said right after that, it, everything else hangs off of that. It hangs down from it. That's essential. It's not, it's not something that's stacked on the ground. It, it's what holds it up. So when we're trying to enact the righteousness that the psalmist speaks of, or the righteousness that James speaks of, what Jesus says, if we're not loving God and we're not loving neighbor, all the rest of that stuff's falling to the ground. Those words matter. The things that we say to each other, that we communicate, matter. You know, there's the old story, you've probably heard it many times, of the older couple and the wife says to the husband, you know, honey, you never tell me you love me anymore like you used to. He says to her, well, I told you I loved you years ago, and if that changes, I'll let you know. And that's, that's kind of a simple answer, but we need to hear those things sometimes. Our children need to know we're proud of them. Our parents need to know we appreciate the sacrifices that they made. Our neighbor needs to know that we know they're going through a hard time and we can't fix it. But we believe in them. And we're there for them. At mom's house, there was a little chalkboard. It hung in the kitchen we all went out the door going into the garage to leave. It was about this big. And she wrote a quote up there. It was mostly scriptures. Sometimes it would be a literary quote. But she would write things up there for years. And sometime, I don't remember the date, but it was the late 70s or early 80s, she wrote something up there. I love you, everyone. Mom. She never changed it. All those years of rotating it out every week or two, she wrote that one, and she never changed it. She lived about five more years after that. And when she died, it was still there. My grandfather lived in that house to 2003, about 18 years after that. And when we went in with mother to clean out the house, that I love you every one was still there. Because when it would get faint, a friend of the family who was a part of our family would take the chalk and outline it again, very carefully following mom's handwriting. I love you every one. The words of God matter. The words of Scripture matter. The words that we say to each other, not just the casual chit-chat stuff, but the, the meaningful things, those things matter. The things to which we say we ascribe, these are our values, this is what we hold high, those words matter. And those things written in chalk, that endure for decades. I love you, everyone. Those words matter. Pray with me. God, we confess that the tongue can indeed be destructive. And every one of us has been banged around by it and probably abused it ourselves on many occasions. But we also know that the power to speak, to write, to use words, to communicate is a very powerful thing. And that though we may often, like Moses, profess that we don't talk very well, we just don't have it in us, the truth is that through your power and your spirit, we can always speak an appropriate word. We may not say it eloquently. 
We may not say it exactly like someone else would say it, but we can say a word that matters. Help us. As we love God and love neighbor, to use the words, to hear the words, to be the first fruits of your creation so that our lives matter more. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a change in our invitation hymn this morning. It's uh, 3.30, only trust him. We'll sing the first and second stanzas, and Wendell will be standing down front to receive you if you need, need someone to speak to this morning. Please stand. Thank Mark and Mary for being with us today, and thank you for the message of, about words this morning, Mark. It's very meaningful. Uh, would you pray with me as we have our benediction? Lord, again, uh, we just come to you today thankful, Lord, that we are able to come today, Lord, and worship, and just thank you so much for, uh, for Mark and, and for his ministry, Lord, and the, the sermon that we heard this morning on words. Pray that you would be each one, be with each one today, Lord, as they go their separate ways. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>